We're going to meet the founder and CEO of a company that employs over 1.2 million people. He started the company in 1974 with $7,500 in his pocket and a belief that electronic products would be an integral part of everyday life, and here we are. He's now the largest electronics manufacturing services company in the world, China's largest exporter with clients such as Apple. Uh, last year's acquisitions included uh, Japanese electronics maker Sharp, and Nokia's mobile phone brand. Uh, please welcome founder and CEO of Foxconn, Terry Gu, who will be interviewed by Adam Lashinsky. Thank you, Alan. Please, Thank you, Terry. Welcome. <clears throat> well, we. Uh, <clears throat> We at Fortune pride ourselves on covering the biggest and most important companies in the world. So, so far today, we've given our audience Alibaba, Apple, Tencent, and now Foxconn, $140 billion last year. That's a big number. Yeah, it just, you know, why not? Be <laughs> <laughs> Terry, I'd like you to start, if you would, with uh, just, a, just a few moments on the founding story of, of Foxconn. Alan mentioned you started it with very little money. Tell everybody about it. Yeah, it's, uh, let me speak, you know, maybe uh, Mandarin uh, for. I was born in 1950 in Taiwan. Uh, back in Taiwan, uh, we had to serve the ar we had to serve the army uh, after graduation from university. So after two years, uh, then uh, you had to find a job. At the very beginning, of course, uh, you will lose money uh, as always. So I started to buy the uh, shark loan. At that time, uh, if uh, if it's check. If you cannot uh, to honor the check, then you will be set to, uh, sent to the prison, and uh, you will be sentenced. So the uh, uh, most of the chairmen uh, of uh, companies in Taiwan, uh, basically they are uh, the wives of the major person, uh, because uh, if uh, somebody is put into prison, then it, uh, the wives could always rescue that person. But um, till now, uh, it's been 43 years. And next year will be the 44 year of our company. So, from uh, the RSC Nops Genesee Nops to Ontario Games, so that was the process of growth uh, and uh, um, colloquial games and all the uh, electronic uh, toys, Mattel games uh, to uh, the uh, later stage PC games. Um, all those. Uh, games or toys you played, uh, be it Comcat or uh, HP, B Dell, or IBM, to foam, uh, Motorola, Nokia, and Apple, and uh, Kindle even, yeah, one, two, three, uh, Alexa, Echo. You can always see uh, the uh, efforts of ours. So we've um, been working with them uh, since the very beginning to, for the development. So my uh, starting up uh, business experience started from 1970 to today, 43 years already. And now we have um, around 1.3 mil million of employees uh, working in uh, different 12 countries. Uh, in plants in different 12 countries. So we just invested uh, Wisconsin major plant and also in Japan. We uh, last year uh, bought a project and they achieved a break even within one year. So uh, so that's brief introduction of uh, our founding. Point out, we have a lot of ground to cover here. You've covered a lot of ground. It occurs to me, I asked Tim Cook earlier for his observations about how China had changed. You were born in Taiwan, and you came to do business in China far earlier than he did. Um, what was that like? And, what, and talk about the changes you've seen. I bring Tim Cook to China. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the changes. Early, early, early stage, okay. <laughs> Even Michael Dale, when he, when he was 29 years old, 
I bring you to the chance, Shen Jin. I'll go back to you know. Ah, yeah, I was in 19. Ah, back in 1988, when Jiang Jingguo ah opened the policy that Taiwan people could visit their relatives in mainland China. So I'm from Shanxi Province. My mom is from Shandong, but grow up in I was grow I grow up in Qingdao, and but then moved to Taiwan. So in 1988, when the policy was open and there was a mutual visit between the relatives or people uh, in between uh, Taiwan and mainland China, so I came to China. So I had a plant in Taiwan. So I first of all arrived in Shenzhen. Oh, first of all, I uh, took the boat from Hong Kong to Shekou, uh, the first uh, industry zone for the opening up of Shenzhen. I visited that uh, uh, city to find that there are a lot of uh, working, uh, very diligent workers, but there aren't too many works. There weren't too many works for them, so I decided uh, to provide some jobs for them. Uh, for example, Tim Cook visited that uh, a plant. Uh, one of the operators uh, he was visiting, actually, it was our uh, the head of the production line. His name is Wang Lai Chun. He worked for me many years ago. And at that time, we found a lot of operators from rural areas to work on our pro pro uh, pro production line. So we trained them and then uh, promoted them. At that time, from uh, the rural areas to the uh, uh, Shenzhen, they couldn't even see any eggs. So I stayed in the United States for 11 years. And uh, I believe uh, uh, young people, you know, eating eggs would be good for their health. That was why uh, the um, we invest a lot to uh, improve their um, nutrients uh, f by providing uh, dinner or meals to them. Um, because uh, most of the workers were from uh, different areas, uh, rural areas in Guangzhou, Shantou, and Fujian. So we signed a three-year contract to them. And uh, those uh, poor people, poor workers, uh, previously couldn't even have access to meat or egg. But now we had provide very good meal. And uh, then uh, they had, had enough of eggs. So after two, 20 years, I brought all these um, employees back. I had a big gathering, and they also brought their kids. I found that their kids are really um, chubby. So, and uh, I ex learned from the United States, um, if you eat every egg a day, that it's really good for your next generation. So um, our employees believe that, um, believe that, and uh, Tim could uh, follow uh, and visited one of our employees' factory. And so that you can see that we gave them opportunity. We treat them well. Uh, you, uh, you saw uh, YY, um, he, was, um, he, was, uh, he was at a restaurant. And, and, and he was a, uh, uh, a very, um, a, a person came to me and he said, I'm very um, glad to see you. Uh, because I don't know you, but you uh, helped us, trained us, and then you also created many uh, bosses. And we have uh, over 1.2 uh, million workers in China, and we have a lot of workers. And that means um, that means like uh, we train a lot of people, and then we we uh, have that management management system and that that training system. They were able to um, uh, learn from Foxconn, and we are, and and I think we we contributed uh, to the um, the whole process of the China. Now Here's Foxconn has been a the leading contract manufacturing company. Now you want to. Uh, you are moving on to something you call Industry 4.0 and intelligent manufacturing. Tell everybody what that means. Uh, uh, when uh, Fortune invited me to, um, to uh, be interviewed here, uh, it was, um, it was um, said that we are the uh, biggest um, contractor manufacturer. And actually, uh, 20 years ago, we um, we already transformed uh, from OEM, from JDEM to JDSM, Joint Design Manufacturing, JODM, ODM, and then to IDM, 
IIDM, innovation, integration, design, and manufacturing. So, uh, uh, to Amazon, we provide IDM. So we're not OD, OMD anymore. It's not, we're just uh, B2, we're not just, uh, we're not just uh, a contractor. I want to talk about big data. I want to talk about artificial intelligence. We've been using AI for the um, past 20 years. We have accumulated, um, just like Tim Cook, Tim Cook, Tim Cook said. Um, uh, he Actually, I show him uh, in China what's tooling in China. Uh, we develop over one million tooling. And many uh, university graduates, they can um, make specs for tooling uh, within a um, few di diameters. Uh, they cannot uh, indicate the torrents. Uh, the torrents is very important. Uh, when you open a bottle of water, it won't uh, fall out. Fall out. You, when you open this, when you open this, you can see the water is leaking out. This is torrents. Torrents, and this is technology. So, um, I, what I'm trying to say is that we used AI many uh, big data machinery uh, way back then. Um, our machine is telling us this torrents is how much. And any university student, um, they talk about apps, apps or they can about subways. Uh, they can uh, write software or they can write uh, apps. But then uh, even if you're gradu uh, a graduate of MIT or Caltech or you're, you have mechanical engineering, um, uh, masters or PhD, if you give him a file and if you tell him to um, file to uh, plus and minus uh, uh, one centimeter, it might take him five years. So um, our uh, university student, we do a lot of uh, very delicate projects and, and we realize the theory and the reality, there's a big discrepancy. Uh, we know that uh, the inner uh, internet can do healthcare. We can do healthcare. Uh, we can do information technology. Can do healthcare. But if you want to replace doctors, but it's something that can be uh, replaced by AI. Um, so we know that for healthcare, you need um, you need doctors' support. And you ask me. My experience in China, and for many past um, many past years, we have accumulated experience. We're not a, a traditional B two industry. We can help our customers to customize. And sometimes we can help them change or choose or we, or recommend them. You can recommend them uh, what kind of material they can use. And you can, this uh, material, they can come to me. I tell them what kind of material they can use and what kind, what's the spec that you should uh, use so the water will not, will not uh, uh, pour out. So, so uh, this is the stage we are in. And I know the 19th um, People's Congress, uh, President Xi talked about the economy. And everybody is, uh, Everybody's doing um, uh, economy, and then no matter your, uh, what com company you are, everybody is uh, doing real economy, and everybody is affected by internet. And, but I don't, but I think, uh, well, people talk about uh, auto autonomous, autonomous driving, but I think uh, the real winner is still the uh, automobile industry. We are per provide over 100 parts to Tesla. Their, the first Tesla automobile was made in Taiwan. The California, um, California government gave him the um, uh, incentive. That's why they uh, moved to uh, Fremont. But it's uh, developing very fast. But the, um, I think the real winner in the automobile, automobile industry is the real car makers. 
So I think for us, uh, the real economy, we, of course we're going to use internet, but we're not going to, I'm not going to call it internet, we're going to call it intranet. And China is changing. Uh, China is uh, doing the internet of uh, things. So I want to provide this uh, technology from our company to small and me medium-sized companies. Uh, no matter what they're doing. Uh, let's say they do uh, shoes, uh, clothing. Uh, we want to provide them technology. Let me give you an example. In Wuzhen, uh, they were talking about digital uh, economy. Uh, um, there's a consumer digital um, economy, and th there's also manufacturing uh, economy. So, so the uh, consumer uh, digital, digital uh, demand is um, there's a gray area for manufacturing one, uh, but you need a precise number. So, so we have to um, we're going to give our know-how of our big data and give it to this small uh, business places: Japan, Wisconsin, and Guangzhou. I want to start with Japan. Uh, why did you buy Sharp, and, and what, what has happened since you bought it? OK. Uh. Uh, why Sharp? Because Sharp is a, it's a display technology. It's in the business of display technology. It was leading the, um, this industry. It's a Japanese company. And it, was a, it, it has a, a, it doesn't matter uh, what they did, um, they were Sony, um, there's uh, Mitsubishi in Japan, and they are over 100 uh, years old. And um, it's been, it's for third or fourth generation. And after over 100 years, some companies are doing this, but uh, some um, European companies are there doing better, like Philips, they're doing a very good management. Um, but. But for a Japanese company, this third or fourth generation, they, for them to improve their company, that's not the most important thing they want to do. What they want to do is to safely, securely uh, hold on to their jobs. For example, they, wanna, they want to increase their job to 3%. Uh, if they want they increase to five per percent. They will hide those two percent, and they say they will bring up uh, that two percent for the next year. So their mindset is not just improving their company. Um, let's say uh, those um, uh, some good companies like Uniqlo and SoftBank. Um, you have the uh, the first generation managing those company. So so they are. Um, their management system is different. And let's talk about Guangzhou. Guangzhou is, no matter whether the governor, uh, he is a uh, expert in aviation. And the uh, secretary, Ren, he is a very uh, capable person. And uh, when I build a, country, uh, a factory in Guangzhou uh, tonight, uh, nine or uh, ten o'clock. Well, I'm going back to Shenzhen. So he, they say uh, they want to know uh, if I have anything to do here. So they're very um, proactive, and you see that uh, they have a very strong back uh, government protecting this um, or supporting enterprises. And and uh, let's talk about Wang Yang. Wang Yang um, once mentioned. Uh, you see many um, uh, foreigners coming to here. They all ask me, and they say, how is uh, China's economy? But I want to know your economy, because I'm doing, I'm in the business of exporting. So they are exchanging ideas. Um, so the foreigners want to know if China's economy is good. But if your economy is not good, how can my company do well? So we can see that we can see that a Chinese government is supporting, and um, President Xi she has a 30-year plan. 
and this is very different concept from the U.S. or the Europe. When you have a, a 30 year plan, and but then versus uh, those um, four year uh, term, you have a you have a change in four years. You have to change or you have to learn in that four years. But then when you have 30 year plan, you have to come, uh, you have to go step by step. Um, uh, okay, that's about uh, Guangzhou. So you, uh, now you're um, let's let me talk about Wisconsin. In the U.S., um, President Trump. I think there's some there will be some some change. Uh, over ten governors are contacting me, and and I go there and I uh, made some investments. I made some I I built some high end hide and uh, factories. Um, I, I am I'm investing in 8K. 8K means it's a big data. Uh, the factory in Wisconsin is that is um, attracting American American attention because uh, they want to uh, provide job opportunity in the Midwest. So uh, Washington is uh, very uh, glad that I'm doing that. And Wisconsin, doesn't matter whether you are in Milwaukee or Medicine, you can see they have everything that's re something really good. For example, Harley Davidson, it's in Milwaukee. It's been there for over 100 years. And or Johnson Control, ST Johnson, G House Care, all headquarters are there. And you, you see that uh, there are uh, a lot of technology in the Midwest in the U.S. And um, you see some governor, and they all um, gave us good incentives. And these intensives is following the rules of the, uh, the law of the, unit, the U.S. And you, uh, I want to tell you, I want to add a point. Uh, when I uh, started my bi business 43 years ago, the opportunity was given to me by the U.S. And now I have this opportunity I want to bring back to the U.S. And when I bought Sharp, and I only sent one person from Taiwan to Sharp bec um, because uh, that's the way I want to do. And when I go to Wisconsin, uh, we wanted to send only 10 people from Taiwan, and we want to um, bring some uh, Americans to come to Guangzhou and to get training. And we also want to hire uh, veterans, um, and uh, I feel that veterans are very disciplined. So, so uh, we would like to uh, send our people to be trained in the United uh, in Japan. And in the future, we're going to use uh, the high-tech uh, AI, big data to uh, manage uh, this uh, system. And then we will compare which uh, side uh, has the higher efficiency. So far, by comparison, uh, we are we think these two areas are very promising. Uh, Guangzhou, uh, as well, Guangzhou is catching up, but Wisconsin is, uh, has already woken up. So probably wait for one or two years, we could see the result. One question, if I could, if I could see a, a hand up. And if there aren't, I will ask you that you, you so I was thinking, uh, Terry, while you were speaking, that you put the global in global forum with all of the places where you do business. You deal with business and government officials everywhere you go. The obvious question for you, you've spent a lot of time in, in Wisconsin and in the United States. Uh, what do you make of President Trump, who I know you've met with more than once? Yes, this year, just, uh, this year four times. And your opinion of, uh, what, what's your experience with him? He is a, uh, you know, he is a very sweet person, okay? And uh, he like you, he say he like you. He don't like you, he say he don't like you, okay? He is very straightforward, this is number one. <laughs> Sorry, we just, he is a very Secondly, he's looking for jobs for the United for people in the United States. Uh, each time he saw, he said, "You should have more jobs, to us, and uh, the salary should be such such." And thirdly, he is a businessman. 
he wouldn't uh, talk something fancy, but he would use very direct, uh, simple language. Me, myself, so a very as a business person, being directed by policy. Okay, I understand completely. <laughs> <laughs> very, very last thing. We only have a we only have a short time, but I want to ask you about one other famous person who you've dealt with in your career, and that's Steve Jobs. Yes, I really miss him very well. Okay, uh, who doing we we working for? When Tang guys against Steve. When we were working with Steve, uh, Steve Jobs, um, he was a very uh, he, uh, great thinker, and uh, he uh, is looking for uh, optim optimism. You know, looking for perfect, being perfect. So he was he was very stringent, and uh, that that was why uh, that is why we are also looking for the same um, uh, perfection. I was very lucky. That was a uh, rare uh, one of those. Uh, Few Chinese people that are invi was invited to attend his funeral. After attending his funeral, they realized he was um, um, he was believing in Tantra. Uh, Tantra is um, in Tibetan. Uh, so he uh, had two ceremony. One is uh, held in the uh, uh, Western way. Um, so there is a yellow uh, mass. Yellow, uh, yellowism, um, and blackism um, in the Tantraism um, in Tibetan. He believes in the uh, yellowism um, in Tantraism, um, similar to that of blackism. Um. So he uh, is very demanding. He's very stringent. He was, but whenever you have difficulties, for example, he will help you. For example, uh, in our company. Um, there was a suicide uh, accident happened in our company. And at that time, uh, Jimmy Carter, uh, was, uh, the former president of uh, uh, Apple, was, uh, uh, of the United States, was a, was a director of Apple. And it, then he asked him, uh, who is the best doctor in the United States uh, that has uh, uh, the most authority to deal with the uh, suicide? And uh, he brought this person to China. And he also brought Air Force um, uh, expert as well as ca uh, Canal University expert come to uh, stay here for two days to address the uh, psychological issues as well as suicidal issues in our company. And uh, Jimmy Carter uh, was here even by himself. So I think different people have uh, different perspectives. He has innovation, creativity, and his vision. The reason, uh, you know, uh, I sometimes could see the shortcomings and made decisions. For example, killed our cooperation with Motorola and another company, but he could see the future. So that's uh, why I miss him so much, working with him. Even though he was very stringent, but when you needed, them, him, needed him, he would help you from the bottom of his heart. He's a great man. Appreciate so much about you being here with us today is that we have in you the uh, so much history of gl global business and also in your company the future and thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.